Oh yeah, you found it. This is English 280 Intro to Comic Studies. This is an online course, as you've well probably figured out. And we'll be doing this class through a mix of video lectures, online discussions, and of course your assignments, which will be submitted online through the Canvas interface. I'll be your instructor for this course. My name is Andrea Gilroy. I got my PhD here at the University of Oregon in 2015, and comics are what I study. I'm really interested in how comics work and how they allow us to represent different aspects of identity. In 2016 and 2017, I was the interim director of the Comics and Cartoon Studies program, so comics really is my jam. This is my favorite thing to teach and uh, my favorite thing to study. I'm really looking forward to spending this time together, even if it's virtually, and uh, I think we're going to have a good time. Any more info for getting in touch with me or uh, have, asking any questions, the syllabus, all of those kinds of basic information on the class is available on Canvas, and you should know where Canvas is because that's where we are now. So this class is Intro to Comic Studies. It kind of begs the question, what is comic studies? Let's go into a hypothetical situation. You want to be a writer. So you have two kind of options for what you would major in in college. You could major in creative writing, or you can major in English. Now both of these are going to help you practice different skills. A creative writing degree is going to help you focus on actually writing literature. You're going to do a lot of writing, you're going to do a lot of workshopping, and so that degree will help you become a better writer in that kind of practical way. An English degree, on the other hand, can also help you become a better writer. You might not be doing as much creative writing right off the bat, but your English classes will help you understand how literature works, They'll help you understand how to make sense of literature, how to read great works of literature, and that in turn will also help you be a better writer by helping you unpack and understand how the form you're working in makes meaning. Comic studies is a little bit more like an English degree. We don't have a lot of classes in how to make comics, although we do have them occasionally. What most of our comic studies classes do is teach you how comics work and help you understand how comics texts and characters have affected our society, work within our culture, and create different kinds of meaning. Okay, so that's comic studies, but some of you might be wondering, what's the point? So I want to take a step back for a second and ask an important question that a lot of you might be asking, or maybe that your parents are asking, and that's, why study literature at all? Well, there's a lot of reasons. One is to understand our own and other cultures. Literature of any kind is a product of our culture. And we can understand our own culture better by looking at those products. Sometimes we're so caught up in living in our culture every day, it's hard to understand who we are because we're too busy living in it. But when we're allowed to take a step back and examine ourselves through the lens of media, well, we might get a different point of view. Likewise, we don't always get the chance to speak with people or go and visit other cultures and locations, but we might have access to their products of culture, and that might help us in some way, shape, or form understand that culture a little bit better. Another thing that's important about studying literature is that it helps us learn to communicate effectively. Literature is communication, and powerful literature, I won't necessarily say good, because even things that we don't necessarily consider good have an impact. By understanding how that literature works, we can better understand how to make our own message more powerful, and reach more people. Literature also helps us understand historical moments and their ramifications. Just like literature is a product of a culture, it's also a product of a particular historical moment. It's going to be influenced by what's been happening at the time, what's happened previously, and how people understand their exact moment in time, and are responding to those kinds of things. Just like if you were to sit down and write a story, you'd probably be thinking about what's happening in the world today. That's true of people writing literature at any point in time. We can't time travel, but we can try and understand how people might have been thinking or feeling at different moments in history by reading their literature. And of course, studying literature gives us a chance to appreciate beauty and art. We only have so much of that in the world, and I think it's a worthwhile cause. This is great and all, but I know what some of you might be thinking. There's a very common notion that getting a humanities degree or studying literature is a one-way ticket to a lifetime of unemployment or underemployment. But is that actually true? No. So in 2011, of the 650 members of the UK Parliament, 65% of them had humanities degrees, as opposed to 10% with scientific qualification and 5% with vocational degrees. All right, you say, but that's England. What about the US? Well, 
In a 2012 poll of 652 CEOs, 60% of CEOs and heads of products of engineering had degrees in humanities. That's an overwhelming majority. In a 2012 study, and remember, 2012 is actually kind of a difficult time financially, the Economic Policy Institute found that the difference in unemployment between graduates with STEM degrees and humanities degrees was statistically insignificant, about 1%. Now, this is in no way to bash STEM or technical degrees, but a lot of people will say, sure, humanities degrees helps you understand art and beauty, but you're not going to be employed. Well, it turns out that's not true. Well, your parents might say, that's great about literature, but comics? Really? My answer should be obvious. Yes, comics. So why am I so emphatic about comics? Well, a couple of reasons. One is that popular culture is really as important as so-called high culture to our everyday lives. It's true that there are important high art novels, but popular culture affects as many if not more people. So understanding how it works can be really important to understanding how a culture works. This is not to say that comics is somehow relegated to popular culture. It's a form that's actually deeply complex and can tell stories in a variety of modes. A lot of people think comics is just, well, superheroes or kid stuff. But there are some deeply wrenching and emotional forms of comics, autobiographies, and art comics that are really intelligent. But, I mean, I think the superheroes and kid stuff are important too, as I said in my previous point. On top of that, understanding comics necessarily builds your understanding of both verbal and visual rhetoric. To make sense of comics, you need to not only be able to make sense of language, but images. So you have to be a good reader on multiple levels. Again, I'm not knocking either English or art history, but in order to do comics, you have to do both. Comics are a global phenomenon. They're well known in the US, but they're actually popular all around the world. In fact, there are traditions as complex and interesting in Japan, in France, in Italy, in South America, India, Russia and the Middle East have burgeoning cultures of comics. So it's a fascinating way to understand how popular culture works not just in the United States, but around the world, and maybe a way to connect with other cultures. Finally, comics are special. What do I mean by that? Well, I'll let Douglas Wolk in reading comics, how graphic novels work and what they mean, do the talking. Comics are not prose. Comics are not movies. They're not a text-driven medium with added pictures. They're not the visual equivalent of prose narrative or a static version of a film. They are their own thing, a medium with its own devices, its own innovators, its own cliches, its own genres and traps and liberties. The fact of the matter is, people in all settings, of all races, of all genders, and all ages, have, can, and do love comics. Many of you are probably coming from different backgrounds. Some of you are comics fans already. Some of you have maybe never picked up a comic in your life. Others of you remember enjoying comics when you were kids, but haven't read any in a very long time. I hope that uh, over the course of this class, we together learn more about comics, how they work, appreciate their history, and I can add your name to that list of people who love comics. See you next time.